what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest version 3.2 project Infinity X ROM and this is based on Android 16. Yes I have actually flashed this ROM earlier too on the Redmi K20 Pro when it was I think version 3.1 or something but on the 3.2 I would say it has been feeling a lot more improved and I'll talk about each and every detail of this ROM so stay tuned till the end of the video. If you're watching my channel for the first time, let me tell you that these ROMs are available for multiple devices and you can check out the flashing guides from the description box below. It is also available for Poco F5 but later I found out that the download link wasn't working actually so I couldn't download it but yeah for the Redmi K20 Pro yes there are two separate versions one is the vanilla one is the gapps included variant and as usual I have flashed the gapps variant here. This is how the about section looks like. We have the Infinix logo up top and it says version 3.2 official right here and it has the device specs right here and a huge thanks to the developer of this ROM and the security patch is latest of September 1st 2025, 4th September 2025 build. And obviously it is based on Android 16. If you just keep tapping and holding here, you will get the Android 16's Easter egg. Now I would just straight up say in one aspect, this ROM can't be beaten by other ROMs at least as of right now. Because right after I flashed this ROM, I checked the play integrity and it was passed. This actually is never possible with other ROMs, as, at least as of right now, because in most ROMs you guys should know that you have to go into the customization settings right now. And if there are options to actually bypass the Google's safety net kind of fix, there will be play integrity fix properties and this update play integrity fix. After you do that and you have to also select the play integrity fix JSON file and stuff, all those things only then your safety net will be passed. But here I didn't have to do anything right out of the box. It passes the safety net. Yes, you should not actually check this stuff again and again. I'm just showing you for the sake of this video. And if you don't know why I'm talking about these things, what is play integrity? Well, play integrity is what makes you use banking apps in custom ROMs. Like you can use your banking apps like MobiQuick, PhonePay, Amazon Pay, and super money and stuff like that. Any UPI kind of app you can actually use. Even backing apps like Yono SBI and ICICI, iMobile kind of credit card apps, all those things should be working fine here. Only after these three things gets passed. Yes, Google Pay may not work because Google Payments doesn't work when the bootloader is unlocked in Android 16 as far as I know. But other banking UPI kind of apps you can actually use with this ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. And that too, right out of the box. You don't need to tweak anything. And that is what I love about this latest Infinity X ROM again. Even in Play Store, it shows device is certified. So that's a great thing. Now, one more thing is that I have seen a lot of comments saying that in the Evolution X that I daily drive on my Poco A5, this Google search bar sometimes annoys some people that they cannot actually remove it. And this Infinity X ROM, let me actually show you. If you have a running a pixel launcher, then you cannot simply remove that as this is the Infinity X launcher present right out of the box in this ROM. That is why you can actually disable or remove this Google search bar. You go to the home screen settings and from the home screen launcher settings, you just scroll all the way down. Just disable this Google search bar. Hot seat background if I just disable that, it will restart the launcher for one second and it has removed the Google search bar. There is double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen obviously and you can disable the at a glance random message now playing and stuff like that if you don't need these weather update current location and stuff like that if you don't need those you can totally disable these things. So this is what I would say makes the Infinity X miles better. You can actually change even the opacity of this Google search bar. Let me show you from that home screen settings the background opacity if I just put it to 65% maybe. And you can also do a little bit of stroke, a newer look of this Google search bar. So that's how you can customize it. Wallpaper you're looking at says Infinity X. Obviously, it's the default wallpaper of this ROM. Now to the left of the home screen, we have the Ghost Discord page. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. And in Android 16, I just love how quickly or how smoothly it just switches to dark theme and white theme. As you can see, you can just do it seamlessly. It's very fast. And the new quick setting panel is there and you can actually edit and like do whatever things you would like to with these toggles as you can see the newer kind of animations are there and let me tell you that if you insert a sim card if it supports 4g volte it should work perfectly fine and 4g speeds and stuff should be working fine but the dialer here is a little bit of like AOSP kind of dialer you can see or a modified custom ROM kind of dialer but in the sound settings as you can see there is the call recording kind of option auto call recording you can enable it if you'd like to now also on the home screen yes there is double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen 
and let me show you the film scan animation yes there are animation customization but just notice how beautiful it looks and the pickup gesture in case if you're wondering if it's working or not yes it's working fine obviously if you take a look at the source change log there are huge amount of change logs i will not be able to show you each and every detail of it but yeah i'll try to show you overall how the rom actually looks even in the device specific changes yeah once you do this kind of scrolling after the end of the scroll it actually gives you a haptic feedback on top and on bottom if you just swipe like this i'm like constantly getting the haptic feedback here like this once i do this so yeah this is really intuitive ui i would say and you can notice in each date what things are added we have the double press power button to launch camera and that is actually working yes you get the like a kind of camera i'll show you that later on and we have the three finger swipe you can like use it for taking a screenshot and the other options which are there you can notice and yes this is obviously working fine even while taking a screenshot it gives you a haptic feedback there is the lift to check phone show ambient kind of options are there by the way talking about assistant yes swiping up from the corners will get you to the new kind of gemini animations you will notice yeah it looks great and even there is the circle to search yes obviously it's working great but sometimes i have noticed if i just press over here randomly it just goes to home here not really sure why it happens but yeah yes translating text is working totally fine with the circle to search kind of thing and the recent panel again looks like this and there are huge amount of options like if you tap on the apps icon there is split screen there is free form there is uninstall app straight up and we have the lock and unlock app screenshot and the close app option open app if it annoys you you can just from the recent panel you can uninstall that specific app as you can see this is nice normal things like bluetooth flashlight and stuff yes it's on full brightness by the way the flashlight in some android 16 roms the flashlight is very dim but here that's not the case and even quick share and stuff hotspot and stuff everything should be working fine here there is also the screen recording and there is record entire screen and one app then there is a device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time hevc is obviously here this is the always on display toggle edit and add even more toggles if you'd like to from right here there is the usb configuration you can set it to file transfer system updater looks like this it shows infinity x updater now obviously in the infinity suit there are a lot of customizations by the way you are seeing this black and white kind of theme that i am using well that's because it's set to monochromatic but if you don't like that you can set it to different colors like you can choose expressive design or a vibrant kind of things to have different color things and there is luminance chroma factor whole palette kind of things and in the lock screen yes there are the clock font styles and there are huge amount of clock font styles as you can see yes these are the old android 13 kind of clock screen clock font styles you can say but yeah there are plethora of options for these just notice the amount of option i keep i just keep scrolling it but yeah you get the idea there is screen of animation charging animation and stuff carrier name and lock screen charging stats pulse and weather settings and just notice the amount of options yes there is udps icon picker as well like the icon customization for the fingerprint scanner it's huge and even the custom animation kind of options it's huge too yes there are the android 16 kind of lock screen clock styles you just have to go into the wallpapers and styles and once you do that go to the lock screen and right there you will have the android 16 lock screen clock styles now a lot of you actually ask me about the overall performance how is the actual performance while daily driving it in the previous rom i reviewed axion v2 kind of rom in this particular rom yes it did give you a taste of nothing os but let me tell you that even when compared to that rom yes infinity x just feels much more stable while daily driving i have to say that because i feel that personally like opening apps like chrome let me show you by opening each app one by one well it will ask me for the login so i just close that but let's open x let's open play store well if this is still opened in the background even youtube is opened let's open this file explorer 2 yes all of these apps are in memory right now if i just open all these apps yes let's just open another website that's the test ufo website i mostly open while testing the device and here let's just open twitter yes it's still in memory let's actually open this post or this orangish iphone 17 pro max and here let's just open all these apps from memory oh i had the youtube opened yes that too is in memory just look at that memory management i mean 
how many old devices can actually do that today well telegram is not opening because it is locked that's why the ui actually went a little bit weird but yeah all the apps are basically in memory so you can get the idea how smooth the performance is over here i do not have any complaints this is a very light rom i would say even with the g apps variant these are the stock apps mostly in this rom well the bing app and stuff is there because i was actually restoring the google app data backup but yeah very light rom i would say and everything just stays in memory and this rom is definitely very good with memory management and even with split screen let me show you yeah that too is working properly here no need to worry about it here i am running play store and here i'm running twitter and obviously you can switch the apps just like this it switches simultaneously very smooth overall in terms of ram management or overall performance i do not have any complaints i just love the overall performance of this rom and it definitely has this newer clock and stuff all these things it gives you haptic feedback everywhere and just look at that animation it's smooth and here are the Geekbench score, Antutu score and other benchmarks that I have tested on this specific build. Yes, with the latest Antutu benchmark, the scores are a little bit bumped up, more than 7 lakhs. That's just huge for this device. Usually you get 5 lakhs, but yeah, the scores has been bumped up because of the newer version of Antutu, I guess. But in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. Let me show you. There is battery information. The cycle count shows just one, but that's not true. It's like it just counts from when you actually flash the ROM. But the good thing is in here, you have the battery temperature saying option and we have the other things. But the animation it does whenever you go into the battery settings, it looks beautiful. The battery life here, you don't need to worry about it. If you have replaced the battery just once, the screen on time, these are all estimated numbers. But still, 7 hours of screen on time, it's just huge, more than 7 hours actually. And screen off or standby, it shows about 5 days, that's a lot of standby time. Even combined use, it shows about more than 3 days. And the health section, for me, the battery health shows up as 80%. These are all again estimated numbers. I would say the battery life here, even with 80% battery health, it's 7 hours plus. I mean, how many devices gets that? Talking about the devices which are 6 years old. And the fast charging and everything, it's working fine, no need to worry about it. We have the app lock obviously and then in the mode settings we have the tip protection as well in case you would need that well it's kind of a snatching protection whenever it detects a snatch it will just lock the device yes there is face unlock and fingerprint both option now in this fingerprint option yes there is this screen off fingerprint unlock or it just means screen off fingerprint scanner you can say i haven't set it up face unlock but it should work properly when the screen is off yes if you tap and hold on the fingerprint scanner area it will unlock with the registered fingerprint scanner of course and with the always on display this is how it will look like and again tapping on the fingerprint scanner just look at that animation the clock just goes back a little bit then unlocks straight up beautiful looking android 16 animations and here or press the power button just notice that clock animation it looks so sleek and smooth and again it unlocks fine and with the app lock this is how the ui will look and if you tap the fingerprint scanner it will unlock and go wherever you left it talking about the stock camera well it has this like a camera and with that 0.66 ultra wide angle lens 1x 2x all these things are working totally fine here no need to worry and the front camera yes it gives you that option to select the xiaomi cv and the cv film and stuff yes the front camera it's working fine even in portrait mode if i just go here and switch the front camera yes portrait mode picture should be working fine yeah i can notice that background blur here i'll give you some samples but yeah it is working fine no need to worry with the rear camera the good thing is you can shoot up to 4k and 60 fps which you cannot even do with devices like poco f5 today with at least the stock options so that is huge yes there is documents mode there is pro mode and if you swipe up you'll get even more options like the panorama vlog short film and movie effects long exposure clone all these things you can download to give you a demo of the shutter speed or capturing speed let me show you this is in portrait mode this is in normal photo mode both are 12 megapixel photos they are looking fine in my opinion there are display settings i'm not going to show you each settings every time but yeah dark theme option is there there is pure black 
and live display and stuff is there but there is no display overclocking here it's running at 60 hertz but in the display features you will get the high brightness mode and typical mode and stuff like that in the sound and vibration settings if we scroll down yes obviously there is dolby atmos you can customize it however you would like to yes you can change the haptic feedback from there too so that actually wraps up this video guys and this infinity x version 3.2 on the redmi k20 pro is actually rocking in my opinion it's very smooth it has a huge amount of customization everywhere even with those I would say it's a very light ROM and it has all the features. It has coolest launcher ever which supports the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. In the recent span, it has a huge amount of options and it has the Google Photos unlimited storage and stuff. Then it passes the play integrity stuff right out of the box so you can use banking apps once you put your SIM card and just daily drive it right away. Use UPI payments and stuff right out of the box on this ROM. That just makes this ROM a huge winner. Yes, I'm daily driving on the Poco A5, the latest Evolution X ROM and I am pretty satisfied but I would definitely love to give it a try this Infinity X ROM whenever it's available because I just saw that the latest build of the version 3.2 Infinity X was actually not available to download for the Poco A5 but yeah, I would definitely love to daily drive it in future on my Poco A5. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video guys. Please share this video with your friends. If you actually enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up if you did. And subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KT Index signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.